Good evening. It is Tuesday, April 21st, and we are going to start with Chapter 4, Flat Stanley, Life in the Flat Lane, Chapter 4, The Museum Thieves. Let's get started. In this chapter, we have Flat Stanley starting right here. He is pushing the buttons on the elevator and he's looking kind of suspicious at his neighbor there wondering. He is looking at, it is Mr. And it's Mr. Um, Dart. Mr. and Mrs. Dart live in the apartment right above the lamb chops. And Mr. Dart was an important man, the director of the famous art museum. And Stanley Lambchaw had noticed in the elevator that Mr. Dart was ordinarily a cheerful man, but had become quite gloomy. But he had no idea what the reason was that he had become quite gloomy. Gloomy means kind of sad. So he was wondering why he would become quite sad. So he was wondering, hmm, and look at that. He's, he's Mr. Lamb Chops there reading the newspaper and it looks like there's something in the newspaper that says another painting has been stolen. So we think uh, we might know why he's been quite gloomy. There is Stanley, Flat Stanley going, oh, I think I know now. It says here. And then at breakfast one morning, he heard Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop talking about Mr. Dart. I see, said Mr. Lambchop, reading the paper over his coffee cup, that still another painting has been stolen from that famous museum. It says here that Mr. O.J. Dart, the director, is at his wit's end. Oh dear, are the police no help, said Mrs. Lambchop. It seems not, said Mr. Lambchop. Listen to what the chief of police told the newspaper. We suspect a gang of sneaky thieves. These are the worst kind. They work by sneakery, which makes them very difficult to catch. However, my men and I will keep trying. Meanwhile, I hope People will buy tickets for the policeman's ball and not park their cars where signs say don't. The next morning, Stanley Lambchop heard Mr. Dart talking to his wife in the elevator. Well, there's Mr. Dart and there's Stanley talking and listening to Mr. Dart talk to his wife. Let's see what this is about. The next morning, Stanley Lambchop heard Mr. Dart talking to his wife in the elevator. These sneaky thieves work at night, Mr. Dart said. It is very hard for our guards to stay awake when they have been on duty all day. And the famous museum is so big, we cannot, we cannot guard every picture at the same time. It, I fear it is hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. Suddenly, as if an electric light bulb had lit up in the air above his head, bing, giving out little shooting lines of excitement, Stanley Lambchop had an idea. He had told it to Mr. Dart. Right here, you see the little light sparkles go off and Stanley going, ha ha, I have an idea. And he told Mr. Dart, Stanley, Mr. Dart said, if your mother will give her permission, I will put you and your plan to work this very night. Mrs. Lambchop gave her permission, but you will have to take a long nap this afternoon. She said, I won't have you up till all hours unless you do. So that evening, after a long nap, Stanley went with Mr. Dart to the famous museum. Mr. Dart took him into the main hall where, let's see what happens. Okay. 
Ah, so this is the main hall of the museum. The biggest and the most important painting were, paintings were hung. He pointed to a huge painting that showed a bearded man wearing a floppy velvet hat playing a violin for a lady who lay on a couch. There was a half man, half horse person standing behind them and there three fat children with wings were flying around above. Well, that wasn't very nice to say. Hmm. That, Mr. Dart explained, was the most expensive painting in the world. There was an empty picture frame on the opposite wall where we shall hear more about that later on. Mr. Dart took Stanley into his office and said, it is time for you to put on a disguise. I already thought of that, Stanley, Lamb Chop said, and I brought one, my cowboy suit, he said. It has a red bandana and that I can tie over my face. Nobody will recognize me in a million years, he said. No, Mr. Dart said, you will have to wear the disguise I have chosen for you. From a closet, he took a white dress with a blue sash, a pair of shiny little pointed shoes, a white straw hat with a blue band that matched the sash and a wig and a stick. The wig was made of blonde hair, long done in ringlets that stick was curved at the top and it too had a blue ribbon on it. And this shepherd's dress disguise, Mr. Dart said, you will look like the painting it belongs in the main hall. Like a painting that belongs in the main hall. We do not have a cowboy picture in the main hall. So this was a better disguise. Stanley was not happy. He could hardly speak. I will look like a girl which of course there's nothing wrong with that, but he didn't want to look like a girl. That was, but that's what I will do. Looks like, he said, I wish I had never had my idea, but he was a good sport, so he put on the disguise. There he was and Back in the main hall, Mr. Dart helped Stanley climb into the empty picture frame. Stanley was able to stay in place because Mr. Dart had cleverly put four small spikes in the wall so that he could hang. The frame was perfectly fit against the wall. Stanley looked just like the picture, except for one thing. Mr. Dart said, shepherd dresses are supposed to look happy. They smile at their sheep and at the sky, you look fierce, not happy, Stanley. So Stanley had to smile. Stanley tried hard to get far away look eyes and even to smile just a little bit. He had to force that smile. That's what Mr. Dart was telling him. Oh, there's no picture in this one. Mr. Dart stood back a few feet and stared at him for a moment. Well, he said, it may not be art, but I know what I like. He went off to make sure that the certain other parts of Stanley's plan were taken care of and Stanley was left alone. It was very dark in the main hall. A little bit of moonlight came through the windows and Stanley could just make out the world's most expensive painting on the opposite wall. And he felt as though the bearded man with the violin and the lady on the couch and the half horse person and the wing, winged children were all waiting as he was for something to happen. Time passed and he grew tired and tired. Anyone, anyone would be tired this late at night, that's for sure, especially if he had to stand in the picture frame balancing on little spikes. Maybe they won't come, Stanley thought. Maybe the sneaks, sneaky things won't come at all. The moon went behind a cloud, and then the main hall was pitch dark. It seemed to get quieter, too, with the darkness. There was absolutely no sound at all. Stanley felt the hair on the back of his neck prickle beneath the curls of the wig, and then creak. 
The creak sound came from right out of the middle of the main hall. And even as he heard it, Stanley saw in the same place as the tiny yellow glow of light, the creaky came again and glow grew bigger. A trap door had opened in the floor and two men came through it in the hall. Stanley understood everything all at once. Aha! These men, these must have been the sneaky thieves. They had a secret trap door entrance into the museum from the outside. The, that was why they had never been caught. They had come through a trap door in the floor. And now tonight they were back to steal the most expensive painting in the world. He held very still in his picture frame and listened to the sneaky thieves. He held very still. This is it, Max, said the first thief. This is where all the art robbers pull a sensational job whilst the civilized community sleeps. Right, Luther, said the other man. In all this great city, there is no one to suspect us. Ha ha, tonight Stanley Lamchata. That's what you think. The sneaky thieves put down their lantern and took the world's most expensive painting off the wall. What will we do to anyone who tried to see me? Who tried to capture us? <gasps> Max, the first man asked. We would kill him. What else? said his friend. He, we would kill him. What else? That was enough to frighten Stanley, and he was even frightened when Luther came over and stared at him. This sheep girl, Luther said. I thought she, the sheep girls were supposed to smile, Max. This one looks scared. Just in time, Stanley managed to get a faraway look in his eyes again and to, and to smile, sort of. You're crazy, Luther, Max said. She's smiling, and what a pretty little thing she is. That made Stanley furious. He waited until the sneaky thieves had turned to the most expensive painting and he shouted in his loudest voice and most terrifying voice, police, police, Mr. Dart. The sneaky thieves are here. The sneaky thieves looked at each other. Max said the first, Max said the first one very quietly, I think, I heard that sheep girl yell. I think I did too, said Max in a quivering voice. Oh boy, yelling pictures. We both need a rest. They both think the picture is yelling at them, but they don't realize that the picture is actually Flat Stanley. Because they don't realize that Flat Stanley is an actual person. You'll get a rest, all right? shouted Mr. Dart, rushing in with the chief of police, a lot and lots of guards and policemen behind them. You'll get arrested, that's what you'll get. Ha ha ha. The sneaky thieves were too mixed up to understand Mr. Dart's joke and too frightened by the police to put up a fight. Before they knew it, they had been cuffed and led to jail. The next morning, the police uh, and the office of the police chief of Stan and and the next morning, in the office of the chief of police, Stanley Lapchop got a medal. The day after that, his picture was in the newspapers. Here's Splat Stanley, the, the medal he got from the chief of police and the photographers for his hero, heroism and saving the most expensive painting in the most famous museum of the city. The end of this chapter. Next time, chapter five. The end of chapter four. Thank you and hope you like this video and you can subscribe or like and